guys you welcome to my channel um i've received a lot of questions regarding electricity practical and i'm here now to take us through how to go about it the major problem with electricity practical is two things number one for you to know the theory that you want to prove why do you need to know the theory you want to prove so that you'll be able to know if the reading that you are getting is intact or not what do i mean you know when you are taking reading on half meter and volt meter you want to know if that reading if the theory you are verifying says that if the current on half meter increase then the voltage current must have also increased if the ammeter current decrease, the voltage current must have also do what decrease. If that is what the theory is all about, you'll be able to know from the value that you are picking. Are you getting this now? And if the theory that you are trying to like work out is that as ammeter is reading a very low current, voltmeter should be increasing. Are you getting this now? Please, I want you to listen to me with an open mind. I'm just telling you possibility of things. Because somebody will be like, uh, it's, it's not all slow, uh, when voltage increase, current should also increase. The case is not always like that. We can prove Ohm's law in different cases. Are you getting this now? So, for example, if the circuit arrangement is such that the kind of current you are getting is an inverse current, that is I raised to power minus one, if that is what you are getting, then whenever voltage is increasing, current has to be decreasing, if it is actually correct. So, what if the arrangement of the circuit shows that what is it called? The voltage is inverse. You will not know because you have not been doing experiments back and forth. You only know the theoretical part. So you need to understand very well why the examiner asks us to use meter bridge. Why real start? Why resistance box? When you know that real start is also a resistance on its own, then we have another constant resistance we have another word resistance again how come and even the wire the constant wire that you have on your meter bridge is also having its own resistance so we now have a more resistance now what is happening are this resistance still the same thing as v equal r i is it still the same thing as that or what you can't really tell until you understand the experiment very well so when you understand the experiment very well, that is theoretical background of it, in how many ways can we express Ohm's law? Because most of us, the only way we know to express Ohm's law is V equal I R. Is that the only way of expressing Ohm's law? No! I can express Ohm's law as V equal to what? R all over what? I inverse. It's still the same thing as what you said earlier. You see, V equal what? R over I inverse. I inverse multiplied by what? R. Is still the same thing as what? What you are, what you are talking about? I believe somebody did not get what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying here. Can you move closer, please? You know, if I have my current, move closer so that it can be shown. So, if I have that V equal to I R, this is Ohm's law, right? I can express this as saying that V equal to R all over I inverse. Can you see this now? So I inverse, if I say, okay, one all over I inverse is the same thing as what? I. You see the way I express this mathematically in this format. The same thing is what examiner is doing whenever they scattered apparatus like that. Normally, if I'm to verify Ohm's law, is enough for me to have what voltage that is voltmeter, half meter, my cell, my real start, and my key. So all of this they are enough for me to prove Ohm's law. But it's so direct, it's pretty because if I do half meter, half meter, voltmeter, key, cell, and then real start. If I do that, I know that when current is increasing, voltage will also be what? Increasing. So that is very easy for me to predict. And, and no job or any difficult stuff will be done. So examiner want it to be experiment. They don't want it to be a manipulated stuff. Do you understand that now? Do I still talk about the manipulated part of this experiment? But get this first before anything what? Anything manipulation. And I hope this set us well. The second thing that I want to point out is that 
A lot of YouTubers, and I want to tell you something. YouTubers are not world. We might just be good. Are you getting this now? And the confidence of what we know. If that is the reason why we are coming here, then it's fine. But we are human. We can make mistakes. We can say rubbish. At times we are under pressure of time. For example, my necklace experiment, I said this personally that my counting of oxidation is not accurate. That's not how it's supposed to be. But why is it like that? Because I'm paying for time. So I need to get what I want to do faster before the time. So you look at that. So if a student does come and watch, he does not understand the counting of oxidation. So student we can't do the same way I counted. And the same thing goes to other YouTubers also. For example, this electricity, I've seen a lot of YouTubers who are not doing it right. Like, there are so many questions that does not even relate to this particular uh, setup. For example, a YouTuber using Gavanometer, when there's no Gavanometer here. Why Gavanometer? Because there is already pressure of creating a video on this experiment. So they thought that it's not possible, maybe we'll have forget to put it. It's not compulsory that I want to use a meter bit when I use galvanometer. It's not a compulsory. Are you getting this now? I'll talk about galvanometer in my other videos, explaining all those apparatus for you, so that you know the reason why we use them, when we use them. Are you getting it now? So, because I could see on some people's, on some YouTuber comment section, uh, whereby they are being challenged. And I want to tell you guys something. If you're a YouTuber and you are watching this, please, let's be open to correction. Every, all people that are watching our video, they are not all novices. We have a lot of them that are very good than we do. But just because they still want to be good better, they just want to take information from us. So when they call our attention to something, open-minded, listen to them. When they are wrong, point out why they are wrong. When they are correct, admit and what? Make correction. That will make us better. It is their comments, their complaint that make us better. So telling them that uh, there's no way you're going to use meta B, that you're not going to use galvanometer. I'm very sorry, you are not correct with that statement. You can use what meta bridge without galvanometer. I hope that is clear now. Okay, so let's go into the main question for today. Now, when you look at the question that I have here. I try to sketch this diagram in two ways, and uh, I must give credit to a colleague of mine, Lawson. I don't know if you are watching this right now. I so much appreciate you. Lawson, come through with the first diagram that you are seeing here. Please, can you move closer and show it clearly? Yeah, can you see this cycle diagram you are seeing here? Uh, I got it yesterday from a very good colleague of mine, Lawson, and. Uh, when I see this, it makes sense. But what is the difference between this diagram and the one he showed is that in the one he showed, they utilize what? Potentiometer. So I just replace the potentiometer with what? Meter bridge. Can you see this now? Then, this same cycle diagram, I decided to show you that it can also come in this manner. Are you seeing it now? So this one is very, very possible for you to see this. Are you seeing But it is still saying what? the same thing when you look at it here resistance is parallel to voltage here when you look at it here also the same thing you cannot connect voltage in series please note that because i heard a lot of people saying that okay voltage will know voltage should be in parallel because when you arrange resistors in parallel the same voltage flow through them are you getting this now that's why this one will always be in what in parallel and your ammeter will always be in series why because the same current flow through them when they are in series are you getting the reason why all these things are always positioned this way because i don't want you to just come here and just take any information dogmatically you need to understand whatever you are taking home am i correct so please take note of that so we are going to be referring to this cycle diagram here uh, to understand our setup. So I'm going to set the apparatus up, and uh, you see the way it goes. Uh, I don't know if time permits us, we are going to carry out everything completely. But otherwise, uh, whether, wherever the time stops for me, I'll stop there. How are you getting the story? And that's why I'm requesting for you guys support on this channel. Somebody just supported us this afternoon with a five thousand error. 
and i really appreciate the person very much if you are watching this i don't know your name but i'm saying it sincerely we appreciate and that's the reason why we could do this video seriously okay so we are running out of time already so let's get started whenever you want to do experiments on electricity the first thing you want to be sure about is that all your apparatus are intact especially the apparatus that wants to read voltage and what current and how do you check that so this is your cell this is an accumulator now we are asked to use a two volt battery are you getting it now so accumulator can only give you two volts and this is what we have here so this is a positive pole can you move closer please so that they can see that clearly this is a positive pole of this battery and this is the negative pole so i'm connecting the positive pole of the battery to the positive pole of the uh of the voltmeter first i want to check if i want to know the voltage of the battery and i want to know if my voltmeter is actually working that's the first thing you need to check very important so then attach this one to the negative pole of the battery so that's the first thing you want to do move closer and let them see you can see that the voltmeter read what two volts are you seeing it now that's the what the voltage of the battery can you move closer so that i can show them can you see this is the voltage of the battery two volts okay so if that is clear check the ammeter also so let's check the ammeter so you pick the ammeter then connect the positive pole of the ammeter with the positive pole of the battery also to check if the ammeter is also functioning so connect it together like this then pick the negative pole of the battery connect it to the negative pole of the ammeter and let's see if it deflects okay okay i think i'm making a mistake now oh sorry you see what happened right now i'm picking the negative pole of the ammeter so there's there's mistake in the pool and that's why you see that it goes on the wrong side so i hope you learned something there so this is supposed to be like this so positive to positive and then negative to negative so can you see now so that means uh the two volt battery produces a current of uh, now i want to quickly explain something there you have two values here it's possible you are using this kind of ammeter there's two values here you have a value down here and you have a value at the top here you see the value at the down part here that's for if you connect this positive pole to this five ampere here so that's why you use the value you have at the down part here but if you connect the positive pole to this what three volts that i have here it's going to be reading the one at the top here can you see so is there no to what 0.6 ampere so that means the two volts battery give us a current of what is 0.6 ampere that's the maximum current you can have am i making sense now okay so we are sure now that uh our what is it called is working our ammeter is working and uh, our voltmeter is also working so what's the next thing you need to do the first thing you now need to do now is that all the terminals of your apparatus connect wire to their terminals you see move closer the terminal the two terminal here you can see wire there the two terminal here you see the connecting wire there already the terminal here you see the connecting wire there already the terminal here you see the connecting wire and the terminal here also connecting wire you see that of the ammeter the connecting wire is there you see that of the battery the connecting wire is there that of real start now i need to explain something to you about the real start uh, somebody commented the last time I was explaining about this electricity and the person said that you are not to connect the two uh, down part of the real start that is supposed to connect one down part and the one uh, top part now I want to say something when you want to learn something don't just learn it because somebody do it understand the reason why the person did it if you don't understand it, it is a video like this one you are watching comment and ask that question are you getting this now there will be response so that you understand why we do what we do you can use these two points here are you getting me now or you use one of these and one of these any of it will give you reading am i making sense it's your choice either you use these two or you use one of these and one of these you are fine to go am i making sense now so the two will give you results is that taken so please that's that about that so i've connected one to this place and uh, one to this place also why do i do that i know somebody is about to ask that i did that because 
most times i don't always have time to respond to some comments and if you drop a critic comment if i did not respond faster you might think i'm trying to avoid you so that's why i always try to make sure that i avoid a lot of controversy whenever i'm doing these things so that's why i just choose this one one and this one since that is what generally everybody knows is that taking now all right so it's only vote meter that i'm here to put uh, what is it called on um connecting wire and please look at the kind of connecting wire i'm using i'm using black and white because this uh, sorry black and red this kind of connecting wire is good for your health are you getting it now so don't use um, some other ones that their resistance is high or they can cut easily so this one is very okay so let's don't let us waste more time let's go on now now how do we start connecting you can see now all this line that you are seeing all this line that you are seeing in this cycle diagram they represent connecting wires am i making sense now so we have that a wire that goes to the base of a resistance are you getting this now the same wire goes to another terminal on the meter bridge because this is a meter bridge now. Can you see? So we connect what resistance to the meter bridge and the resistance box to the meter bridge as well. So you can see I'm picking this now. So connect this to this. So can you see this now? All right. So we have this right now. Okay. So pick this also and connect to this. hope we are seeing this clearly okay so we are done with this now so if you look at the other side here you have resistance box which is where we have here so i connect my resistance box here so there are a lot of um, style of resistance box i don't know the one you have in your school uh, but this is the one we have where i am <coughs> right so I take this here. Okay. So this is fine, like this. I send it now. So I have this, I have this. So what next? Look at this diagram now. You see that the voltage is what is parallel to this resistance. So this is my voltmeter. Can you see? This is my resistance, one ohm's resistance, you know. They are going to cover this one for you. You know that it is one ohm, but it is one ohm. Is that it now? In case you want to manipulate. Okay. So take now from one end of the terminal, take it down to this place. To the positive pole of the voltmeter. Oh, good. Then the other terminal here, you take it to the negative pole of the voltmeter like this okay so we're done with that also so if you look at our diagram now we are in line so what next what next what next right now is for us now to connect to the meter bridge to the key okay <clears throat> so if you look at this now this is the key here and uh, it goes to the end of uh, this meter bridge here so i have this but like I told you earlier, you are having the same thing with this. I think this is quite clear enough for you to understand. So can you see? Okay. So you can see what I have here. Can you see? This is, this is what the meter bridge, look at the terminal here, coming down to the key. So I connect this like this. Then the next one, <coughs> you have this now connected to the uh, negative pole of the hammer meter. Can you see this now? So I have this now. Then I have the next one, which is positive pole of the hammer meter. Okay, sorry. The negative pole of the, the key goes to one leg of the hammer meter. Sorry, that will be the positive pole of the hammer meter. Do you know why? Because if you look at this hammer meter here, it's connected to negative pole here. I get it now. So negative pole of ammeter needs to go to negative pole of the battery. So pick the negative pole of the ammeter and let it go to the negative pole of the battery. So that means the other leg of the ammeter that goes to the key is the right, that is the positive pole of the 
Um, can somebody help me with my hanky so that I can clean my sweat? So the positive pull of the battery of the arm goes to the positive, goes to one leg of the key rather. All right. So can you see this now? So the next thing is that what? The positive pull of the battery. This long one is the positive pull of the battery. Please note it very well. So you pick the words. The positive pull of the battery goes to one leg of the real start, just like I have it here right now. Okay, so can you see this now? <clears throat> All right, so another leg of the real start goes to the what? Goes to the meter bridge. You can see that. Please show the cycle so that they can easily follow the cycle up. So you connect it like this. So you have nothing to fear, just connect exactly the way you see it can you see real start can you see real start battery hard meter key can you see then meter bridge can you see the meter bridge right here then we have what the two uh, the one ohms resistor that is unknown resistor can you see resistance box and the volt meter now what's the next thing to do then we have our jockey so the center here is connected to the what jockey so connected to the jockey i hope it's clear right okay because i would like to avoid that question of okay so now we have our circuit connected now if you are using this meter bridge there's something i want you to note come move closer let me show them this because it's uh can you see if you don't have this iron here if you don't have this iron here the circuit will not give you the right thing or it might not work because it is this iron that connects this place and this place together that make them work as a circuit why this iron is not there this place has been disconnected this place has been disconnected and that is the case of using meter bridge as potentiometer i once said it that you can convert your meter bridge to potentiometer i'll give you that just remove this iron move closer or is it capturing it you can get once you remove this iron this place will be functioning as potential meter once you put the meter iron back it functions as a meter bridge you have the iron at both ends now let's take for instance that your school did not have like the meter bridge represents you did not have this iron you can have a conductor to connect this side and this side together you can use a connecting wire to do that am i making sense now okay so what's the next thing let's go to the question now and what does the question state the question states that um, um, okay, connect the cycles as shown in the diagram above. Adjust the real start such that when the jockey is at G, that is when the jockey is at G, which is point zero of the meter bridge. Are you getting this now? The ammeter shows maximum deflection. Now, when the jockey is at G, it's as if you don't use the jockey at all. So, how do you go about that? then make sure you close your circuits that is you have switched your circuits on like this now let us look at uh, come closer come closer uh, so we now adjust our real start and then look up we need to adjust our real start now you see that move closer so that you can see the reading on the hand meter so when i start adjusting my real start now my you can see this is on, on point zero now so if i adjust my real start you see my current is reducing that way, right? So I want the current to increase. So I adjust the real start this way. Please show the way I'm adjusting the real start. So if I'm adjusting it like this, you just see that the current is now what increasing. So can you see now? So let's see. There's another region where we are going to add the maximum current. No other region. So let's go back to that region where it's deflect maximum. So let's just keep checking. Very the real start till you have that point back. So the point should be somewhere here. Okay, we're not having it. Okay. I think uh, it's at this point right now. So uh move closer so that the reading can show. Can you see now? So what do they ask us to do at this point? Can you see what we have now? So what exactly do they ask us to do next? Okay, read and record the value of the current I naught. 
Keeping the real start fixed in this position throughout the experiment, put the jockey at T such that 15 cm read and record the corresponding uh, readings of the R meter I and the volt meter V. So right now, we are going to take down this reading of R meter, that is this maximum reading. We need to take it down. So when we take it down, we now start the experiment by doing what they ask us to do. Taking correct, you are not touching the real start again. And I, I think I want to explain something here. You see that, that this experiment say we should leave the real start constant like that, right? The experiment can come in another way and ask us to leave T to be constant. That is always place your jockey at a particular length. Why you vary your real start? Are you getting this now? It's possible. The experiment can like okay, come back, okay. Keep your current, keep it constant. Are you getting this now? That is, move your real start until the current gets to a particular level. So measure the length of this wire there, that is very dirty and know where it is there, and also take the reading on the voltmeter. Am I making sense now? So a lot of things can be kept constant. Like now we are keeping the real start constant. At times it can be the volt meter that you are going to sorry, it can be the what R meter that is the current that you will keep constant depending on how the question comes. But you know this one now we say we should keep what real start constant. Now we are going to start by setting the value for the resistance box, start picking some value for it, and uh, with that we are going to come up with a successful experiment. So right now I will have to stop here. So if you have a question, you can let me know in the comment section. Uh, and if you would like to have these questions, you can tap me up on WhatsApp so that you can have what a picture of it. And by tomorrow, if I'm chanced, I'm going to come up with theoretical explanation of this experiment so that if you want to manipulate, then you can get something done. See you in the next one.